Okay, in this video we're going to combine some groups together using something called the external direct product. So you can define this for any number of groups, but we're going to define it for two groups, and then you can inductively uh, define it for more easily. So given two groups, G1 and G2, their external direct product is given by, so the set is just the cross product of G1 and G2, and then their operations are just performed component-wise. So it's pretty simple. So let's look at some examples examples. So let's look at maybe Z5 cross Z. So as a set, this is equal to all M and N, and M come from Z5, and N come from integers. So in other words, the operation that's happening in the first component is happening modulo 5, and then the operation in the second component is just normal addition of integers. So here we could have some example. Let's do 4 comma 9 plus 3 comma 17. So notice that's going to give us uh, 7 comma, so 9 plus 17 is 26, but then in this first component, we're working modulo 5, so we can replace that 7 with 2, because 7 is congruent to 2 mod 5, so when you add these things up, you get 2 comma 26. All right, let's look at another example real quick. Let's maybe look at R with uh, multiplication cross Z3. Okay, so in other words, what we have here is this is everything of the form x comma m, and x is a non-zero real number, and m is an element from Z3. So that means that m is just like 0, 1, and 2. Okay, sick. So now let's look at maybe the inverse of 3 comma 2. Okay. So notice that's going to give us one-third in the first component. And then that's going to give us 1 in the second component. Because now if we do our group operation, in the first component it is multiplication, but in the second component it is addition. So in other words, if we have something like x comma n, uh, maybe we'll put a star for this group operation, y comma m, that's going to give us xy comma n plus m. Great. So you have to respect the group operation in, any, in all, all of the parts. Okay, good. So I'm going to clean up the board, and then we're going to look at an important property of this. Okay, so this first resu result we want to look at is somewhat general. So let's let the ordered pair x, y be in the direct product of these groups g1 and g2. And let's say in the group g1, the order of x is r. That means r is the smallest natural number for which x to the r is equal to the identity. And then the order of y is s. Then the order of this ordered pair x, y is the least common multiple of r, s. So uh, let's see why that's the case. So let's uh, set maybe L equal to the LCM of R and S. So from that, we know that L equals R times A, and it also equals to S times B, and that's for some A and B natural numbers. So that's just the definition of being a common multiple, not exactly the least common multiple, but that's the definition of being a common multiple. Now what we want to do is notice that if we take XY to the L power, that's going to be the same thing as X to the L power, Y to the L power just by the way that a group operation on a direct product of groups works. But now we can replace L and um, with those two things. So that's going to give us X to the R to the A, Y uh, to the S to the B. Great. But now X to the R is the identity in the first group, which we'll just write as E1, and Y to the S is just the identity in the second group, which we'll write as E2, but that's E1 comma E2, but that's going to be the identity in the direct product. So what that tells us is not that the order of uh, this ordered pair is L, but it does tell us the following, the order of X, Y divides L. 
Okay, great. So now what we'll want to show is that we have this division the other way, and then um, we'll have that this is exactly equal to the LCM. Okay, so moving in that next direction, let's set L prime equal to the order of XY. So what that tells us is that XY to the L prime equals uh, the identity in the direct product of the group, in other words, E1 comma E2. But that tells us that X to the L1, um, Y to the L, sorry, that should be prime, equals E1 comma E2, from which it follows that X to the L prime equals E1, and X to the, sorry, Y to the L prime equals E2. So all of that's happening in the component groups instead of the direct product. Okay, so, but what this tells us is that the order of X has to divide L prime. So remember the order of X was R, so the order of X divides L prime, and this tells us that the order of Y divides L prime. In other words, S divides L prime. But if R and S divide L prime, then that means that the LCM of R and S divide L prime. That's just by the definition of the LCM. So in other words, L, which is what we set equal to the LCM, divides L prime. But now notice that these two equations that we've built, we have L prime equals this order. So we can replace this up here with L prime. So we have L prime divides L and L divides L prime, but what that means is that L has to equal L prime. In other words, the order of this ordered pair XY has to be equal to this LCM. Okay, good, that's the end of this uh, proof. Okay, I wanna clean up the board and then look at a special uh, other result. Okay, so building off this last proposition, we've got this super important theorem. So it says that when you take the direct product of ZM with ZN, that's gonna be equal to ZMN, or really isomorphic to ZMN, if and only if the GCD of M and N equals one. So what we have here is that the cross product of two cyclic groups is cyclic, if and only if the order of those cyclic groups are relatively prime. Remember, any cyclic group is isomorphic to ZM, so that's essentially what we're proving here is when can you take the direct product of cyclic groups and get a cyclic group again? Well, the answer is when their orders are relatively prime. So that's what makes this so important is it classifies combinations of all cyclic groups. Okay, good. So let's look at this uh, forward direction. So let's uh, suppose that uh, ZM cross ZN is isomorphic to ZMN and the GCD of M and N equals D, which is bigger than one. So in other words, we are working towards a contradiction. Okay, good. So now let's take an arbitrary element A, B, N, Z, M, cross Z, N. And now let's notice if we do A comma B added to itself, so M times N over D times, let's see what we get. So here we're going to get M times N over D times A, and then M times N over D times B. And now it may seem like a problem here because it looks like we have fractions, but we're in ZM and ZN, but we actually don't have fractions because D is a divisor of both M and N. So now notice here, we can write this as um, M times uh, N times D times A, and then this one is N times M over D times B. Okay, good. And now notice this that I'm boxing in orange, and this that I'm boxing in red are whole numbers. And we know that because A and B are whole numbers, and D is a divisor of N, so that's a whole number, and D is a divisor of M, so that's a whole number. But then this first entry is a multiple of M, 
And this second entry is a multiple of n, which means both of them are congruent to zero in their respective groups. So a multiple of m is congruent to zero mod m, so it's zero and zm, and then similarly for n. And so notice what that tells us is that the order of a, b um, is less than m times n, um, and we know that it's less than m times n because this thing, m times n over d, is strictly less than m n, and that's for all a, b, n, z, m, n. Sorry, z, m cross z, n. So what that tells us is that z, m cross z, n is not cyclic. So how do we know it's not cyclic? We know it's not cyclic because none of its elements achieve the right order to be a generator for the whole set. We would have to have one element with order m n um, to for this thing to be cyclic. Okay, so and that's our contradiction. And so what have we contradicted? We've contradicted the fact that this greatest common divisor is bigger than one, so that means it has to be equal to one, proving this direction. Okay, I'll clean up the board and then we'll do the reverse direction. Okay, so let's look at the reverse direction. So here we wanna suppose uh, that the GCD of MN equals one, and now let's notice that the order of 1 equals m in zm, and the order of 1 equals n in zn. So what that tells us is that the order of 1 comma 1 equals the LCM of m comma n, which equals m n over their GCD, which is 1, which equals m n. Okay, good. So, what that tells us is that z m cross z n is cyclic because we've got this element of order m n. So, we can write this as follows. z m cross z n is cyclic generated by this element 1 1. But, we also know that this thing is of order m n and all cyclic groups of the same order are isomorphic so that means this has to be isomorphic to the cyclic group z m n okay good and that's the end of this proof